I could put to live. I can't see anything. Ooh, better turn them back on. All right, we are getting the. Hey, what's up, hacksters? Welcome to. It's still technically what the Wednesday. <laughs> Um, and what we're doing today is talking about robots. One especially what the thing that has happened recently is that uh, our office got broken into and a bunch of stuff got taken, including uh, my, my good laptop. So I apologize if the video quality is subpar. Um, but besides doing a bunch of recoup from that, I've been working on a new companion robot inspired by this beautiful one called Cameo? Cameo. Oh, duh, I get it, cameo. That's so good. Um, this is a sweet chameleon-based conversational helper robot designed by Aelin and Abik, and I'm really excited about it. It's based on the Matrix voice and a couple of Raspberry Pis. Look at this whole little stack there. As well as a giant battery pack with some 18650 batteries and a, at least one servo here and a speaker. So they talk about how they crafted the body out of EVA foam with slots so that the uh, Matrix voice there could hear out of it. Is it voice or the creator? It's the voice, yeah. And um, what it's doing is basically sentiment analysis based on what you're saying to help you understand how you're coming across. That's where the speakers are mounted <laughs> above the tail. And it's got this adorable little anime eyes uh, with little, little shinies in the eyes. I love it. And this is a 3D printed shoulder mount with magnets that helps it attach to you. Um, they go into how the software is shared. And one cool thing about, that I love about this project is they just use really entertaining language throughout. But also you can see you know, the shoulder brace uh, STL file there. And they talk about how it actually does what it does, which is that it, uh, it picks up on key phrases to let you know what kinds of tones you're using, how you're coming across. No more wondering about how a conversation went or fretting days later about how you sounded during that meeting, phone call, or casual chat. Um, so what happens is that you go, how did I come across? And SNPs will respond to that. From there, the sentiment endpoint program will pull out the last 1,000 words or so out of the database and separate them based on the direction they originated from to determine who was speaking. So if it's mounted on your shoulder, it's going to be pretty clear that it was coming from the side. And then... Um, the, it rates the phrases using the text blob library on a scale to one to negative one in terms of like negativity, positivity, or neutrality. And then it communicates this to you verbally via SNPs. Now the unfortunate thing is that SNPs.ai was just acquired by Sonos and they're shutting down the SNPs project, which makes me very sad because I think that we need privacy-focused smart voice assistants. If we're going to have smart voice assistants, we should have options for people that are easy to use and privacy-focused. And so, you know, the Mycroft project is still going strong, but apparently it can be hard to work with. But uh, the Matrix team are actually looking into this um, to see where to go from here. And so I hope that I hope that they publish soon. They're really great about like building lots of cool projects that sort of teach you how to use the technology and publishing that stuff really fast. So I love it. I have lots of faith in them. So what I've been doing is I was inspired by this uh, to work on a project that I've been planning for ages called Gibson. And Gibson is named after the computer, the mainframe in the movie Hackers uh, from back in the day. And they talk about hacking the Gibson. So this is a little tiny Gibson that you can hack yourself. Uh, it's designed for <laughs> for children, basically. So it's using the BBC Microbit, which I think is something that's really friendly for little kids. And also using Microsoft Make Code, which is a drag and drop coding interface that I've been messing around with here. And uh, pardon me, it's been a long day. I had to file a report and everything. Um, yeah, so... Here is the code. I can actually use this touch screen. Wow, magic. Uh, this is the code that's running on Gibson itself. So it starts up, it shows you the little ah, face. And uh, in this case, you know, the little buttons are going to be its eyes, but I'm going to put googly eyes on them so that it'll be especially adorable. Because you gotta. Uh, I haven't done a googly eyes robot yet, and that's 
a complete failure on my part that I accept and I'm going to work on. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to 3D print a body for it. Um, it looks like this, basically a big round orb with a couple little, a couple little wings on it that are going to flap uh, expressively. And it only has one servo to keep things simple. Oh, pardon me. Mm. And uh, yeah, so I can do a little happy face, a little sad face, you got a little confused face and whatnot. Uh, and what I've done today is basically I started the project, which is linked in the description to this video. You can see where the code is currently hosted for this version. I'm going to show you what it does. So what we're going to do is I have this giant battery here, and I have the two micro bits plugged into it. And if I hit this button, they should both turn on. Yes, we are, there we go. And this is the sender. And this is the receiver, which is going to be inside of the robot. Uh, so the sender does this, and it, they each have like a little expression. So pretend these are the eyes, and then this in the middle is the little beak mouth. And they also have a little audio to go along with them. So if it's happy, oh, come on. Hmm. Yes, I would like you to wake up, please. That'd be nice. This was just working. It's what the Wednesday. Anything can happen. <laughs> Come on. Come on. There we go. That was the happy one. And then the sad one. And I'm going to probably do like custom little noises so that my robot is different from the rest, but... That's the little confused face. And then uh, I'm going to put some other ones on there. But so far, we've got three little expressions with uh, audio to go with them. And I'm going to put a servo on it so that it can like flap its little wings. <laughs> this is going to be so cute. Um, it's based partly on a tawny frog mouth. And it's going to have a little bowler hat. Uh, so that's, you know, that's the beginning part of Gibson. Oh, yeah, and there was one more thing that I wanted to mention. Since it's What the Wednesday, I had a very What the Moment earlier, which is that I was soldering on this speaker to this micro bit, right? Just between pins zero and ground. And if I want it, I, like, I could design the enclosure so that it amplifies uh, and makes it a little bit louder because it's a little bit quiet right now. Or I could add an actual amplifier, but in the meantime, I was trying to solder the speaker onto the back so that it wasn't obtrusive, and it, I discovered that the pins are connected in the front to these little alligator rings, right? So the ground, that's like one continuous piece from the ring to the, the little uh, pin there. But on the back, they're not connected. See how there's this line between the ring and the little pin? Uh, over here, there's no line there. And over here there is. So I soldered to the pins themselves, what I thought was the pins themselves, and it turned out that the speaker wasn't connected at all, so I had to add little blobs of solder to connect the rings to the uh, edges. And then the speaker worked. So if you're having issues getting something to work with soldering uh, to a micro bit, then be warned that might happen to you. It could happen to you! <laughs> anyway, Cool, so that's um, what I've been up to today, besides boring bureaucratic stuff. And um, I hope to have a lot more to show you soon with Gibson. I'm really excited because I've been planning this project for ages, and there's always something else to do, and finally I have the time to do it. Also, ARM's uh, AIoT conference was awesome. Uh, we got to play around some more with the Adafruit Edge badges. Um, which are running their little machine learning thing that I talked about two days ago. Check out that video if you want. And um, yeah, I had a wonderful conversation with some people about what fabrication tools and techniques you use in order to bring your ideas to life. And I'm going to be publishing those notes soon, so keep an eye out. Uh, that's it from me tonight. Have an awesome rest of your What the Wednesday. I'm going to check for comments before we shut this down here. And he says, you can run servos from a micro bit. And yes, you can. This is the thing, though. I've run into issues before timing servos and audio together. Like, if I did the servos on their own, then it worked. And if I did the audio on, on its own, then it worked. But otherwise, I'd get some weird pausing effects. So you can. It can be weird. 
and we're going to explore that further in the weeks to come. <laughs> and then hopefully have a really super kid-friendly robot that anyone can build. Uh, yeah! Thanks for watching. I'll catch you soon. Alex out. Hack on.